Thank you, Mo. This is a great event. You know, we're hosting our own event in, in Bahamas next month, and we know firsthand it's a lot harder than it looks. So round of applause for Mo and the, the organizational team. They do it every year. So for those who don't know me, I'm, I'm Trevor. I love crypto, and I'm just honored to be here. I, I got into crypto in 2012. I bought my first Bitcoin on eBay, of all places. Show of hands, anybody at eBay? A couple of people. <laughs> Do not recommend that. But um, uh, I kind of parlayed that into uh, the early ICOs. Does anyone know what the first ICO was? Shout it out. MasterCoin, yes. So MasterCoin kind of launched it. It's called Omni now. But from that to kind of other projects like Factum, MadeSafe Coin, those were kind of the Bitcoin blockchain ICOs. And I was, that's kind of my education in the ICO space. And shortly after that, Ethereum kind of came on the scene. I was very lucky to be in Toronto at the time and kind of in that community. I felt, felt the energy, was an early investor in Ethereum, and that helped me as well because I got the windfall to re-kind of circulate it into the community, investing in projects like Shapeshift and um, EOS and other kind of infrastructure companies as well. And that was just kind of my thing, is just advising companies, investing when I can, and, and trying to be as helpful as possible. And then one day, I had my big idea. And, and if you know me, I always kind of uh, take action and, and dive into shiny new things. So uh, this one took me a little longer because crypto didn't really have business models at the beginning. But my big idea was I was running a, a private equity company at the time, and I was going to tokenize it. I was going to create the world's first dividend-paying crypto. It was going to be awesome. If you owned it, you would get paid to own it. You would get more crypto for owning crypto. And, you know, people got excited about it. I had a lot of good momentum until reality hit in. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> it turns out um, my, my idea, my brilliant idea was a so-called security. And it's, it's a little, you know, it's a little harder. It's a little more paperwork. It's a little more risky, a little more cost. But the upside of doing it was, you know, you get an unlimited pool of capital that, that you can access, like institutions and, and public money. And that kind of led me on my journey to this realization that I think is the biggest and best kept secret in crypto right now, and that is the next mega trend in crypto is securities tokens. And it's not necessarily these little micro funds that I was, I was looking to launch, and that's kind of why we decided to pivot and try to launch a meta platform that can launch the next generation of securities tokens. What is a security token? It's very, very simple, actually. It's just ownership in an asset. It could be LP shares, units, um, like in a REIT or limited partner shares. It's just a tokenized version of that. In security tokens, you have investors that expect profits, not purchasers that expect a product. And you have usually a regulated offering of some kind. And you'll see things like KYC that you'll have to, to master at some point. The reason I think everybody is, is getting excited about securities tokens, I know last year um, no one talked about it. It was, wasn't even a phrase yet. I don't know who coined it, but I'll, I'll take credit for it if, if no one has yet. <laughs> but um, Nowadays, everyone's seeing it because it's, it's an unlimited potential. You have real estate, equities, bonds, derivatives, mortgages, all these paper-based assets that have something real attached to it can and will be tokenized. And that's why people are getting excited. Um, why? You know, why bother? The securities seem to function just fine without blockchain. Um, I have a bunch of reasons up there, but for me, it's, it's about number one, the programmability of tokens. Static equity like shares, you can't do anything with. They just kind of sit there in a filing cabinet somewhere. With smart contracts and securities tokens, you can actually program it to do various functions that add value to your business. You can basically eliminate your entire back office. You can automate dividend payments, proxy voting, corporate governance, you can do this all within the token. Of course, there's other reasons. <coughs> um, capital, you know, you get access to this growing pool of crypto capital. It's very frothy right now, which is usually good for entrepreneurs. Um, all the other reasons, open 24-7 the markets, you have lower fees, et cetera, et cetera. But this is kind of what, what gets me out of bed. You can see the little speck on that chart is actually the current landscape of securities tokens. Just a little speck of dust in the crypto universe, and even a speck of a speck of dust in the greater, broader capital markets. Um, you know, I was on a panel a few weeks ago 
in uh, New York at a Credit Suisse event, and I was invited to moderate the panel. And I kind of hijacked the discussion, and the last question I asked was, I said, guys, with, with security tokens about 1% of the total token universe today, it's actually less than that, it's a fraction of 1%, what is that number gonna be in a few years? And there were guys like Mike Novogratz in the room, uh, Joey Krug, I'll never forget his answer, because he said 95%. And then he thought about it, and if you know Joey, this would make sense, and then he's like, yep, 95%. <laughs> and, and that kind of took me, took me back a little bit because that's, that's a profound statement, 95%. That means trillions of dollars of securities are gonna have to migrate to the blockchain in a short amount of time. And does the infrastructure exist today to, to enable that? I won't spend a lot of time here, but there's not really a debate anymore. Like last year, there was a bit of a debate, but these guys are kind of throwing up the white flag. Not Novo, he's, he's with us, but um, yeah, it's, everyone's kind of says this is the writings on the wall and it's kind of inevitable. So, so we're kind of finally excited to have won the upper hand in that debate. <clears throat> but this is the question I think that um, you should be asking is if, if security tokens are so great, like Trevor is saying, where are they? Why, why do so few of them exist today? And I can say firsthand, I, I know the answer. I wish it was a more complicated answer, but it's really simple. It's just really hard and agonizing to do. You have to structure the tech. You have to make it functional to the way security is, the legal web of global regulatory bodies and securities laws. And even if you get those two things, you gotta get listed somewhere. And guess how many exchanges list security tokens right now? Zero, not, not T0, like actually zero. <laughs> um, so no, you can't get liquidity, you're a zombie coin, so then, then what's the point? So that's, that's where Polymath comes in. That's why we built Polymath. We are building the Security Tokens 2.0 platform. Security tokens exist today, and we think it's time for a new wave, a new tsunami of tokens that have a standard, that have a protocol underneath it that everybody can launch on top of. If I could sum it up in one sentence, Polymath is empowering trillions of dollars of financial securities to effortlessly migrate to the blockchain. If anyone asks uh, what Polymath is, try to remember that. It all starts with community. Um, you know, in the Ethereum days, it was all about the developer community, and that's how you knew it was legit. And for us, it's the same. We focus really hard on building by far the biggest security token community on the planet. That's developers, legal professionals, regulators, and um, legal professionals. <laughs> Secondly, you want to create a, um, a lower barrier. We're creating interfaces and wizards that I'm going to show you guys in a second that make it easy. So anybody can create a security token. Uh, the barriers are very low. You also want to have KYC functionality. We've innovated on proprietary technology where you can actually do KYC directly within the token. And then finally, the liquidity, the elephant in the room, we've architected our protocol that's gonna be backwards compatible with other exchanges. So all of our liquidity partners and all of our issuers that launch on Polymath will be able to make beautiful token babies together. <laughs> okay, check it out. This is a demo we did uh, just for this and you can go to polymath.network slash wizard. I'm not gonna uh, walk you through it. You can actually play with it live. And this is how this is how, while you fill this out, in the, in the real version, the, the smart contract is getting built in real time. And you can see this is our vision. This is like the level of simplicity that we think the world needs to actually get excited about security tokens and blockchain. We're inspired by Ethereum. Um, we're very biased to that project. Ethereum launched the, the half a trillion dollar utility coin revolution. And Polymath is doing likewise, but in the security token space. Ethereum made it easy for developers to launch ICOs. Polymath is making it easy for non-technical Wall Street people <laughs> to launch STOs, we call them, not ICOs. This is my favorite chart. This is the, the, the graphs and the patterns of the market cap of utility coins over time. If you look on the far left side, you see it starts with Bitcoin, and then you have Mastercoin, and then you have a few other altcoins, and you see some linear growth. But then Ethereum arrives on the scene, it makes it easy to launch ICOs and the hockey stick takes off. That was the inflection point for this market explosion that we've seen. Make no mistake, it was Ethereum. 
And for securities tokens, this book hasn't been written yet. We see the exact same pattern playing out. You have a couple security tokens that have launched, kind of the, the early security tokens. They've done a fantastic job getting them on the map. But if you're in my shoes, you can see that the world is begging for a new catalyst to launch the security token revolution. And that's what we're positioning Polymath to be. If you've ever been involved in an IPO, you know it's messy, it's expensive, it's time consuming. That's, that's one of the reasons there's, there's not a lot of them these days. But blockchain is going to change that in the same way that blockchain made payments more streamlined and got rid of all the middlemen and rent seekers in, in a transaction, all the you know, settlement banks, clearing houses, payment processors, credit card companies, you don't need any of that. And we see the exact same dynamic playing out in capital markets. We don't need all the middlemen for a fundraise. And we're trying to streamline that whole process. It all, it all starts with the issuer. The issuer is the one who's creating the token. They could be creating a new token, a new fund, or they could be tokenizing, they could be tokenizing an existing fund. So it starts with them, and we've built a protocol where they can interact with the investor on the bottom side. So we have the supply side of the marketplace and the demand side of the marketplace. And when you put it all together, we have a robust protocol, a robust standard that all of these disparate parties can use to be incentivized for a common goal, which is to move this, this movement forward. I challenge, I dare anybody to find a better advisory board than this one. We, we're very grateful and humbled to have some of the most high caliber and highly engaged advisors in the world. Uh, Patrick Byrne, David Johnston, Eric Voorhees, he helped refine this vision early on with Stan Moroshnik. Um, he, he created the first crypto investment bank called Argon Group and now Element Group. And the list goes on, Anthony DiOrio, Steven Narioff, two uh, Ethereum original gangsters, and of course Matt Rozak, he better be here. Thank you for dinner, or, or not if you're not here. And this is, this is the core team, and, and, and thank you everybody. We, we brought most of the team here. Some new hires, Cal Gabriel from the Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Family Funds, uh, Igor from GMP, Canada's largest independent investment bank. We're just stacking our team with high quality business people and developers like everybody on the top row as well. We'd love to, to meet you guys. This is the... Uh, does anyone recognize this boardroom? It's from the TV show Suits. They filmed it in, in Toronto. So we basically snuck in and shot our promo video there. <laughs> we brought some names there. That's Steven, Steven Narioff from uh, Ethereum joined us. Next to him, Sonny from UnoCoin, India's largest, largest exchange. Next to him, Jeff Pulver, a pioneer in, in the broader internet space. He invented voice over IP technology. Couple predictions. Uh, Mo, you can write these down for next year, and I can eat my shoe maybe, but this is what I truly believe is going to happen. Utility tokens are going to plateau, and I think we're already starting to see that a little bit, and security tokens are going to emerge. And I think by this time next year, security tokens will have a bigger market cap than utility tokens. It's not going to take much, just a couple big funds to tokenize, and we're already bigger than the utility token marketplace. And finally, the polymath network effect will have established itself. That's, that's kind of my background, is building network effects and building the best inventory of supply, that's issuers, and the best list of accredited investors, that's demand, and then it'll be too late. Goldman Sachs can't touch us, even if they try, because we'll have the network effect, just like when Google tried to compete with Facebook, it, it was too late. <clears throat> Mo, I, I promised you a special, an, a special announcement. I hope you don't mind, I have several. We are officially the biggest community on the biggest crypto social media platform. We hit the cap. We capped out. <laughs> we, we broke Telegram. That's our claim to fame. But no, we, uh, we didn't even know there was a limit, but we capped out at 50,000. That's more than, than a lot of other top projects. Um, I say this, uh, this is not a vanity metric. I, I have bragged about those in the past, but in this case, I think this is truly, this is truly a key metric because in decentralized projects, your community is your project, literally. And the more robust your community, the more engaged they are, the bigger it is, the healthier your community. This is a big deal. We have, these numbers are outdated already. We're over 50,000 investors have signed up, 20,000 issuers. Can you imagine that? 20,000 launches. How many, how many ERC-20 tokens launched in their first year? We've already got 17,000 people signed up. 
to launch on, on polymath. We've just really blown the doors off this. ST20, if it looks familiar, it, it should. This is, this is a big deal, folks. This is what I've been working on really diligently in the background the past six months. If, if you know your Ethereum homework, you know that the ERC20 standard emerged from the community. A guy named Fabian uh, Vogelsteller um, suggested it, and then the community adopted it. And we want the exact same thing to happen. The security token world does not have a standard. When Vitalik was a little boy, he didn't dream of making securities more regulatory compliant. And that's what I dreamed of. <laughs> So we need one. We really need a standard for all these. That's why security tokens don't really exist yet. There's not a common language that they can all work on. We're hosting a summit in March. I'd like you guys to apply if you're interested, where we're authoring this standard and we're releasing it to the world. This is not a polymath project. We're just spearheading it. We want this to be very organic. If you're a legal professional, a um, business person, or a developer, we'd love to have you apply to come and be a part of this with us. I had my T0 hat on the other day. I had like five people come up to me saying, what are you wearing your competitor's hat for? <laughs> and uh, it's actually the opposite. This is, this is kind of the, a match made in heaven for us. Uh, Patrick always says, you know, we're the uh, Goldman Sachs, the decentralized investment bank. They're the crypto exchange. And it's really a perfect match for us. They're doing the liquidity work for us and we're doing the launching. And that's why we're excited to, to announce a, a partnership with T0. We're advising on their sale. And more importantly, we're looking forward to help um, really I, um, crystallize our partnership moving forward. So we're, we're super excited about that. Your phones, keep them out, take a picture. This is <laughs> Polycon 18. We have Patrick Byrne, Roger Ver, Brock Pierce, Bill Ty, Anthony, Ty Lopez. We've got the Battle of the Ties. And this is the Security Token Launchpad event, Polycon 2018 at Bahama Resort in Nassau, Bahamas. We are stoked for this. It's coming right up. It's, it's going to be a little less formal, a little smaller. It's going to be pretty exclusive. I'm not sure what the ticket situation is, but uh, check, out, check out the site. We'd love to have some sophisticated people kind of join us at that event as well. We did, did not do an ICO. We, we, we declined doing an ICO. We didn't think it made sense for us. Um, so if all those wads of cash, please throw them at other projects. We are, we are closed. And we are moving towards our launch date. And I am happy to announce on January 31st, our tokens will be distributed to the community. All of our beloved pre-sale purchasers and advisors will be receiving their tokens. And the platform, Polymath, Alpha will be concurrently released January 31st, coming up. So that, that's the official day of the security token revolution. I want to thank again everybody for coming, and please come and visit us at our booth. I'd love to answer any questions about Polymath.